digital fashion illustration is becoming more and more popular. And although there's a lot of software out there that you can use to create your fashion illustrations, if you're an Adobe user, Photoshop is a great option for this. Now, I showed you how to color your fashion illustrations in Illustrator in this video, but today I'm going to show you how to do this with some simple tools in Photoshop. Now, keep in mind that I'm not going to go through all of the tools in Photoshop, so you should have a basic understanding of how to use the software in order to get the most out of today's tutorial. So I've got my scan or photo of my illustration and the first thing I like to do is crop it and clean it up. Cropping will get rid of any excess paper or areas you don't need. It also helps to ensure your file isn't larger than it needs to be simply because you have extra white space around your illustration. To crop your picture, choose the crop tool and drag the sides of the box that appears to surround your illustration more closely. Once you're happy with the size, press enter. When you scan or take a picture of your sketch, sometimes your paper can get a little dull or small marks and flaws may appear once you open it in Photoshop. To help brighten up the paper and sharpen your details, go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. When the Levels box appears, you'll see a graph with three sliders beneath it. The black one darkens your pen or pencil lines, the gray one sharpens your midtones, and the white slider will brighten the background. Move the white slider closer to the center to brighten the paper. And as you do this, you'll notice that some of your details or dark lines start to lighten or disappear. To counter this, move the gray slider to the right. Move each slider until you get the desired effect and then press OK. If there are still random marks on your sketch, use the eraser tool and manually erase them away. To give you the most versatility when you're filling your illustration, keep the layers you use to add color separate from the layer with the original sketch. That way, if you make a mistake when you're coloring, you can erase it without worrying about erasing your outlines. You'll also want to change the blending mode of your sketch layer to multiply. Blending modes change how the color on one layer interacts with the color on another overlapping layer. And what Multiply does is make any area that is white appear transparent. So when you add your color in another layer, you can see through the white areas to the color you've added to your sketch. Create a new blank layer to add your color. You'll need to place this layer below the sketch layer, but you'll first need to unlock it. To do this, all you'll need to do is click the padlock. And once the layer is unlocked, Drag the empty layer beneath the sketch layer and you're ready to start adding your color. One of the simplest ways to add solid color to your sketch is with the paint bucket. Choose the paint bucket, click the foreground box to choose a color, and in the options bar, make sure that contiguous and all layers are checked so that Photoshop will fill one area at a time and it will use the outlines of the sketch layer but fill color in the empty layer. Then, just click to fill with solid color. You can also fill with pattern if you change the option in the options bar from foreground to pattern. I also like to use adjustment layers because they allow you a little more flexibility with sizing and placing your pattern. I want to add denim to this pant, so I'm going to open a denim texture and save it as a pattern. Then, go back to your sketch and select the pant. I'm using the magic wand to do this. And again, check your options bar to ensure contiguous and sample all layers is checked. Next, click the black and white cookie at the bottom of the layers panel and choose pattern. The denim swatch, which is the last swatch that was saved, will automatically appear. And to size it so it looks proportional to the sketch, use the slider to scale down the texture. And if you need to move the placement of your texture for any reason, bring your cursor onto the artboard and click and drag to move it around in the sketch. 
At some point, you may want to just color in your sketch like you would if you were using your markers or color pencils. This is when I switch to the brush tool. You may also want to make a separate layer for this. There are so many brushes to choose from in the brushes panel, but to start, let's keep it simple and use the basic soft round brush. Choose the brush, adjust it to your desired size, and let's start coloring. Now I like to use the Adobe color themes to get colors, particularly for hair and skin. And if you're unfamiliar with how to use the color themes panel, you can check out this video. Once you choose a foreground color, make sure you adjust the settings in the options bar. The only setting I usually change is the opacity and you'll see why in a second. Now, go ahead and start coloring as if you had a marker. The lighter opacity setting allows you to build color on your sketch, similar to what you'd be able to do with your markers. If you color a little outside the lines or over another texture, you can just switch to the eraser tool and erase it. This is also the beauty of having this on a separate layer. As you can see, I'm able to correct my mistake without affecting any of the other layers. The lighter opacity helps to create the highs and the lows and the shadows and the hair and skin and any other place that you would use the brush tool. And for the texture, like the denim, you can add shadows and highlights using the techniques that I show you in this video. So I hope this has been helpful. There's so many things that you can do with Photoshop and fashion illustration, but this tutorial will help give you some good tools to start with. Have a great week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.